Hey students, in this lecture, we are looking at the first chapter of Standard 8 NCRT CBSE Science, which is Crop Production and Management. Now, in earlier classes, we have seen how plants can make their own food just by using sunlight, water, air, and also the nutrition from soil. Now, this process is called photosynthesis. However, animals, including us humans, cannot make our own food. If the animal depends on plants, it's a herbivore. If it depends on other animals like these predators, they are carnivores. And omnivores depend on both. This may be a good time to thank God that dinosaurs are extinct. Now, why do we need this food? We need this food to give us energy and we need the energy for our body to perform its natural processes like digestion, respiration and other activities. And more importantly, in today's world, we have become accustomed to quality food and also a variety of food. Early man would just survive on raw food and hunting, but not us. We want everything just the way we want. With civilization came cultivation. And when plants of the same kind are cultivated at one place on a large scale, that is called a crop. There are several types of crops and this includes cereals, vegetables, fruits, etc. Now these can be classified based on the season in which they grow. And India is a vast country. The climatic conditions like the temperature, humidity, rainfall vary from one region to another. And despite this diversity, there are two broad cropping patterns identified. The first is Kharif. These Kharif crops are sown in the rainy season. And in India, this is typically from June to September. These crops include paddy, maize, soya bean, groundnut, cotton, etc. The second are the Rabi crops, which are grown in the winter season, which is typically from October to March. And the Rabi crops include wheat, gram, pea, mustard and linseed. And we have to note that apart from these, there are several pulses and vegetables and these are grown during summer at many places. Cultivation of crops involves several activities undertaken by farmers over a period of time. You may find that these activities are similar to those carried out by a gardener or even you when you have grown some ornamental plants in your house. Now, these activities or tasks are referred to as agricultural practices and these include the preparation of soil, the sowing, adding manure, irrigating them, protecting them from weeds, harvesting and finally storing the grain. Preparation of soil is really the first step before you grow a crop. One of the most important tasks in agriculture is to turn the soil and loosen it. This allows the roots to penetrate deep into the soil and hence breathe easily when they go deep into the soil. So the loosened soil helps in the growth of earthworms and microbes present in the soil and these are friends of the farmer since they turn and loosen the soil and add humus to it. So you have learned in earlier classes that soil has minerals, water, air and some other living organisms. In addition, dead plants and animals get decomposed by soil organisms. In this way, various nutrients in the dead organisms are released back into the soil. Since only a few centimeters of the top layer of soil supports plant growth, turning and loosening of the soil brings nutrient-rich soil to the top so that the plants can use these nutrients. This is why turning and loosening of soil is very important for the cultivation of crops. The process of loosening and turning of soil is called tilling or ploughing. This is done by using a plough. Ploughs are made of wood or iron. If the soil is very dry, it may need some watering before you actually plough the field. The ploughed field may have some big clumps of soil called crumbs. It is necessary to break these crumbs. The main tools used for this purpose are the plough, the hoe and the cultivator. The plough is being used since ancient times for tilling the soil, adding fertilizers to the crop, removing weeds and turning the soil. This is made of a wood and is drawn by a pair of bulls or other animals, horses and camels and it contains a strong triangular iron strip called plough share. The main part of the plough is a long log of wood which is called a plough shaft. This is the handle at one end of the shaft. 
The other end is attached to a beam which is placed on the bull's necks. A hoe is a simple tool which is used for removing weeds and for loosening the soil. It has a long rod of wood or iron, a strong broad and a bent plate of iron is fixed to one of its ends and it works like a blade. It is pulled by animals. But nowadays, ploughing is done by tractor driven cultivator. The use of a cultivator saves labour and time. The next step in agriculture is sowing. As you can see, there is a funnel-like structure here that is being pulled by these oxen. Seeds are going to be put into the funnel and of course this is a traditional method. Nowadays, seed drills are used and this also allows the seeds to be sown at an equal distance from each other. What you see in this picture here is also a seed drill and as you can see this person here is loading seeds into the drill manually. This of course again is an old picture and nowadays tractors are doing the job. Substances which are added to the soil in the form of nutrients for healthy growth of plants are basically manure and fertilizers. Soil does supply mineral nutrients to the crop plants. However, continuous cultivation of crops makes the soil a little poor in its nutrition. So farmers have to add manure to the fields to replenish the soil with nutrients. This process is called manuring. Improper or insufficient manuring results in weak plants. Manure is an organic substance obtained from the decomposition of plant or animal waste. Farmers dump plant and animal waste in pits at open places and allow it to decompose. This decomposition is caused by some microorganisms. The decomposed matter is then used as organic manure. This is something that you have learned in your earlier classes. Fertilizers on the other hand are chemicals which are rich in a particular nutrient. How are they different from manure? Fertilizers are produced in factories. Some examples of fertilizers are urea, ammonium sulfate, superphosphate, potash, NPK and etc. The use of fertilizers has helped farmers to get a better yield of crops such as wheat, paddy and maize. However, the excessive use of fertilizers has also made the soil less fertile and also it has become a source of water pollution. Therefore, in order to maintain the fertility of the soil, we have to substitute fertilizers with organic manure or leave the field uncultivated in between two crops. This is called fallowing. The supply of water to crops at regular intervals is called irrigation. Now the time and frequency of irrigation varies from crop to crop, soil to soil and season to season. In the traditional methods of irrigation, human or cattle labor is used to bring in water from wells, lakes and canals. In the first method or the moat method, the water is supplied to the fields to the plants via a moat that is dug around them. In the second method or the chain pump method, this is a water pump in which there are several circular discs. So by moving this chain, water is then supplied. The Dhekli method is probably a very old traditional practice in which water is drawn from the well with hand or a pulley. In the Rahat method, cattle force is used to draw water out of the well by means of a wheel. A sprinkler system is a modern type of irrigation which is best suited for uneven land and where sufficient water is not available. There are perpendicular pipes having rotating nozzles on the top and these are joined to a main pipeline at regular intervals. Whereas the drip irrigation system is where water falls drop by drop directly near the root. This is also called the drip system and this is the best technique for watering fruit plants, gardens and trees. Water is not wasted at all. In a field, many undesirable plants may grow naturally along with the crop. These undesirable plants are called weeds. The removal of weeds is called weeding. This is necessary since the weeds compete with the crop plants for water, nutrients, space and light. Farmers adopt many different ways to remove weeds and control their growth. Tilling before the sowing of crops helps in uprooting and killing of weeds, which then get dried up and mixed with the soil. The best time for removal of weeds is before they produce flowers. The manual removal includes physical removal of weeds by uprooting them or cutting them close to the ground from time to time. Now, weeds can also be controlled by using weedicides. These are chemicals like 2,4-D. 
these are sprayed in the fields to kill the weeds. They do not damage the crops. They are diluted with water to the extent required and sprayed into the fields with a sprayer. But remember, spraying of weedicides may affect the health of farmers, so they should be used carefully and should never come in contact with the nose or mouth. Harvesting of the crop is the best part of the cultivation process. This is when you experience the fruits of your labor that you have invested so far. Harvesting is done either by a sickle or a harvester. Grain needs to be separated from the chaff. This process is called threshing and this is done with the help of a machine called combine. Smaller farmers use a winnowing machine to separate the grain from the chaff. But for those with large land holdings, the tractor does it all. Because harvesting is the best part of the cultivation process, if you observe a little bit, all the festivals in India, the major ones, are surrounded around the harvest period, like Pongal, Baisakhi, Holi, etc. Storage of grain is just as important as anything else, especially when you need to store the grain for a longer time. Since the harvested grain has more moisture, the grains are dried in the sun and then stored. This prevents attacks by pests and other microorganisms. Farmers store the grain in jute bags or metallic bins. Silos and granaries are used for larger scale storage for protection against rats, insects and other pests. Just like how we saw food is produced from plants, animals also provide us with food. For example, milk, which is sourced from animals like cows, buffalo, she goats, she camels, etc. There are other sources of animal food. Think about them and make a list of it. Now, when animals are reared to produce food and when this is done on a large scale, this is called animal husbandry. So this is all we have on chapter one, crop production and management in this lesson. So hope you found this video informative. Thank you so much for watching and have a lovely day ahead. Peace.